All right. Um, so here's a really nice piece of the lake right here. So the point is, desire exists, right? Is it what it seems? Nah. Unless you're up to date with the 21st century and it seems like a biological reaction to your conditions. Uh, and not just your uh, current conditions, but sort of evolutionary conditions. Things that have paid off in evolution uh, in some way or another. Desires. Now, they don't pay off now because like the desire for sugar and sweet foods. In evolution, it paid off. You climbed the mountain to the creek in the spring and you ate some blackberries and it helped you boost you and it gave you some extra energy to do some useful stuff. Now, boom, it's too easy to get sweets. That desire is backfiring because part of the efficacy of the desire was that it was limited in its success. In a way, it may not be limited anymore. So there's the little channel back there past the young kid. There's a really rich kid camp over here. Like, they've got 17 sailboats and four speed boats, and they got one of those things. I haven't seen it this year. They might have been renting it or some last year. The uh, water jetpack thing you fly around with. And uh, yeah, it's a real rich camp. Anyway, uh, I love this coast. I'm fantasizing about buying this piece of land. I think there's a construction restrictions on it, but that'd be fine if I could build little cabins. My uh, retirement dream now is to buy a piece of property on a lake or pond and make a camp. Because um, you really can book a camp up here all year. It won't make a lot of money, but if you're retired, and you already own your property and have fixed rent at the List, uh, you know, at the property tax level. So, um, I think uh, Gary should be more open. Everybody is having trouble seeing it, and I get that, but it's sort of like the oxygen. It's in the air. It's right there. It looks invisible. No, it's there. It's kind of like that. We, um, we have a series of perceptions. Things like desire, love, anything that we think. Um, evil. Now, when you say, does evil really exist? There are examples in our experience that we call evil. They exist. Should we call them evil? That's a different question, right? Because evil becomes an abstraction, a certain kind of abstraction, and invades upon itself. It's not just a word assigned to certain behaviors. We're, we come to have an idea about evil, and we're intoning a, uh, a judgment upon regular experiences, or maybe not so regular in the case of evil, hopefully irregular. I would say they're pretty regular in this world, but we want them to be irregular. Are they really evil? So that goes both ways. One is to, yeah, Hitler was evil, but does it mean that he's on God's shit list and the Satan is, you know, is it, he worships Satan? No, evil is still just a category. There's all kinds of ordinary bad we wouldn't call evil that's like on a road to evil or is just less extreme. So when we're talking about desires, you could go ahead and have a philosophy about our desires, lack of desires, what desire means. You're never going to get away from the foundation that everything we know comes through this stream of perceptions. The stream of perceptions, the series of perceptions that we have includes all of our feelings. So when you say, oh, it's not just the stream of perceptions, I'm in a cockpit and I've got all these instruments. Yeah, and you look at the instruments, you use your perceptions and it, so your feelings for example of fear dread comfort whatever they are also perceptions yeah they look like they're your brain processing we could deduce uh, that it's your brain processing because when someone else sees the same experience they interpret it differently so we go oh hey that part of the experience that I had that I talked to somebody else and they didn't seem to have that must have been induced by my own brain yeah but how do you experience them through a perception of your feelings. In other words, your brain generates perceptions, or so it seems. All we know is that we have a series of perceptions, which we might as well assume all of them were generated in some sense by the brain, though in the case of the sense perceptions, we're talking about things that seem to be uh, reconstructed or regenerated from information. In other words, we don't just create them out of whole cloth, 
we are try we're making a creation that tries to fit uh, the reality. All right, now, um, hold on. See, I know I can do this thing. Well, five minutes and twelve seconds. You know, you can do that for like reading glasses. You can put a little circle. You look through it, and it'll make stuff clear. It's like a pinhole camera. I want to make a set of reading glasses like that because I think you can do it a non-prescription because it's not a parabolic lens. So that's another issue. Anyway, how about this? It's really pretty where I am and I'll just show you this cove that I'm going to. There's kind of like an island right there. It is connected, I guess, with the road. It's kind of a swampy thing and there's a road. And there's a, people have that dock over there. And then it goes around. This belongs to the camp. They rent a couple houses over there. You won't be able to see it, but uh, that's where the eagle family has their nest. And I like to come in here and hang out. I came in here one morning. I stayed up all night, so I went out at dawn, like 4.30 or so. And I saw a beaver swimming around in this, in this pond. Big. So usually when I come here, I see the eagle, and if I see the eagle, yeah, there it is, there's one, looks like a baby one. Let's go check it out. Oh, the parents like to sit here. Oh, there's one right there. One of the babies. See, but not a white, not a, not a white head, but I guarantee you that's a bald eagle baby. See it? Another one is over here. And I haven't seen the parents the last times I came. <coughs> I've only seen the babies. Of course, they're huge. So, this peninsula is a separate piece of property. Look how nice it is. Sloping and gentle. Alright, cheers.